This video is sponsored by Student Debt. Student Debt, because college isn't hard enough already. If you're a gamer or are familiar with gaming through Twitch streams, YouTube, or similar mediums, you've likely come across the name Dark Souls, or perhaps the description Souls-like. Often this is in reference to a game or genre that is unbelievably difficult or unforgiving, or in some cases referring to the grim and grandiose atmosphere of the world a game takes place in. The inspiration for this coinage is a game from 2011 created by From Software and Bandai Namco called, interestingly enough, Dark Souls. This third-person action RPG is the creation of a man by the name of Miyazaki, whose life story and journey to becoming a game designer is so fascinating that I would highly recommend researching his creative odyssey. Miyazaki's first game for From Software, which he personally headed, was called Demon Souls, released for the PlayStation in 2009, and while it was an eventual success, it was far more of a sleeper hit than its successor. Dark Souls, on its commercial release, was a massive success, selling millions of copies in its first. To understand the appeal of this series, I would like to offer my own experience with getting my hands on the game. As a gamer, I've always loved not only playing games, but understanding the underlying mechanics and themes that make them so fun and engaging. I originally started with RTSs like Dawn of War, Age of Empires, and Command and Conquer Tiberium Wars, but since 2004, I have been a huge fan of Halo. I started with H2, was hooked, and eventually got to play Halo 3 and Reach on the Xbox Live Network. But in 2011, months after the game's release, Halo was in a transitional phase, with 343 Industries Microsoft taking the reins from Bungie. In late 2011, on November 11th, the Elder Scrolls Skyrim released, and my brother was kind enough to buy me a copy for Christmas. Skyrim reignited my love of classic RPGs, investing in a character through their stats and abilities and making them my own to explore these wonderful, fantastic worlds through my own personal lens. Seeing these mythic realities via the eyes of someone you designed virtually from the ground up was such a fascinating experience that is often difficult to replicate. Fast forward to 2012. I'm in my local exchange, looking for cool games or something to pique my interest, and there it is. I come across this darkly beautiful cover of a warrior facing away from me, entering some sort of dark abyss, the spectral forms of other figures enshrouded within. Above this striking image, the title, Dark Souls. Now, I had no idea what this game was actually about. In the early 2000s, there was a disparate relationship between a game's cover and its actual content. Some of the most amazing artistic covers were disappointing puzzle games. While the sleeper hits often lay behind bland, uninteresting box designs or stock movie posters. Even still, these diamonds in the rough often made up for the wild west of the box art to gameplay dichotomy. Flipping it over, above some more gameplay images and a model of the player character, I saw, clearly labeled at the top, Prepare to Die. And it was also in French, which was helpful. Maybe I was just at the right emo-slash-death-obsessed period of my life. I mean, the world was supposed to end, thanks Mayans. But this was too cool to ignore, and I wanted to know what the game was about. So with the encouragement of my friend Derek, I brought it home, popped in the old 360, and fired it up. Coming from the bombastic chanting of Skyrim's glorious main menu, I was surprised by the stark, ascetic nature of this lobby. Presented with a black screen, ominous echoes from the deep, and the title, Dark Souls, I hit start, and was greeted with a shrill, forceful noise that were my volume any higher, likely would have stolen my soul in the spot. But with this first challenge defeated, I knew this was going to be something wild. When you start Dark Souls, the game begins with a cutscene that is undeniably epic in the truest sense of the word. This is like starting Lord of the Rings for the first time. And just like Galadriel, an ancient feminine voice tells you of the struggles of the gods and the beginning of the world in this grand mythological display of power, war, and dragons. 
here's the first dialogue. In the age of ancients, the world was unformed, shrouded by fog. A land of grey crags, arch trees, and everlasting Then there was fire, and with fire came disparity. Heat and cold, life and death, and of course, light and dark. As you come out of this, you find yourself in the classic RPG trope of being held prisoner, locked in a dungeon in the undead asylum. Knowing that this is likely for a crime you didn't commit, you find the key, open the gate, and proceed into a narrow corridor, where you're greeted by zombie-like undead banging their heads against the wall like it's a Slipknot music video. You come across an open room with no enemies inside. Proceeding inside, all of a sudden, a giant monster hurtles down from the ceiling. You don't really have any weapons besides a broken sword, so you do your best to run around and strike it a few times, before inevitably getting smashed into oblivion. No, not that oblivion. When you wake up, you're back where you started. Going back in the room, you take measure of the environment, and may see a couple torches on the left wall, illuminating an emergency exit, and you haul ass to that door, ignoring the quaking slam and sudden chanting of boss music to make it through before the gate slams down on its own, the asylum demon peering at you through the iron bars. You've just overcome the first challenge of the game, avoiding combat to take the side approach. This in itself is not entirely unique. Plenty of games present you with an impossible obstacle you have to circumvent in order to power up and acquire better stats and gear before returning to deal with the threat newly equipped to tackle this previously insurmountable foe. But it does set the tone. Barring some deceiving instances of low damage enemies placed to help you get a hang of the unique mechanics, the villains in this game will not be pushovers, and you are at far greater risk of death than they are. Working your way through the rest of this tutorial, you'll notice strange orange runes on the ground. These are messages, left by the game's creators and even other players to guide you on your journey. Instead of a voiceover or a friendly character following you through the level to narrate and teach you how to pick up items, these descriptors are some of your few options of understanding the world around you. In Dark Souls, you have to piece the world together yourself. This investigative system is so vital to the game's experience that the closest friend you have, Oscar, the knight who boldly ventured into the asylum to save you, is found broken and bleeding in the next room. Providing you with your healing item and a short prophecy for telling the savior of mankind before expiring, now his I last words are, I would hate to harm you after death. So go now. And thank you. As you walk away, you hear another shrill sound of expiry, and see souls added to your counter, knowing in your heart what has just transpired. You proceed up the stairs, fighting a few more zombies before becoming another fog door onto a small balcony, the asylum demon hungrily leering up at you from the floor had so generously introduced you to with its massive hammer. This time, though, you're ready. As you take the plunge, you strike, dealing tremendous damage and taking the boss off guard long enough to get your bearing, recover from the fall, and through tenacity and persistence, striking it down. By the way, that was the easiest boss of the game. Well, unless you include Pinwheel, but you'll find that out on your own. The tutorial now complete, you emerge, going through the doors, ascending the hill, and triggering a cutscene. The same ancient woman reading part of the same prophecy Oscar relayed in his dying breath, before being snatched away by a giant raven, 
your screen suddenly engulfed in darkness. This is a great example of one of the things that makes the Soul series so utterly fascinating and full of depth, despite the simplicity of the archetypes on focus here. In Japan, ravens are often seen as messengers of the gods. Miyazaki-san hails from Japan, but he was fascinated with the Western world, particularly fantasy novels. While he loved these worlds of swords and sorcery, he often encountered English words he did not understand. But rather than be defeated by this, he would just fill in the blanks in his own head. This encounter would go on to inform the entire storytelling experience of Dark Souls. The genius of the lore of these games is that they are so open-ended and up for interpretation that even as they're revealed to you through the environments, encounters, and the description of the items and weapons you obtain in your travels, they are infused with an air of great mystery. For here in Lordran, the land of the ancient gods, we are amidst strange beings in a strange land. The flow of time itself is convoluted, with heroes centuries old phasing in and out. This guy's seen the new spider. The very fabric wavers, and relations shift and obscure. This dialogue is spoken by none other than Solaire. That Solaire. Your first real friend in the game. Solaire is encountered almost immediately after the second boss, praising the sun and offering to help you on your journey. In the Soul series, NPCs are a mixed bag, but they're often brooding, insane, or some combination thereof, cryptically offering advice or wares and services, but keeping to themselves. Solaire introduces the mechanic of summoning. While some have complained of the multiplayer aspect of the Soul series or the lack thereof, especially in these earlier games, it becomes much clearer once you realize that this game is a single player experience with the multiplayer added, not as a throwaway addition, but to add another level of intricacy and open worldness to the experience. If you think of Dark Souls less as Call of Duty with swords, and more like Skyrim with side missions that let you play with a friend, you'll have a much better time. Summoning works by placing your summon sign via the soapstone Solaire gifts you. As with messages, once this sign is on the ground, it will become visible in other players' worlds, allowing similarly leveled friends to invite you into their instance of Lordran. This means that instead of joining a lobby, you're essentially projecting a phantom copy of yourself into another's world, and then controlling them until the area boss is defeated or the task accomplished. And that's kind of cool. On the flip side of this coin is invasion. While manual invasion signs do exist, using a red sign soapstone, a dragon remnant, or a gravelord servant sign, most invasions are unsolicited. The only consent invaders need to attack your world is that you are human. In the game's story, humanity is now undead, and through scraps of humanity, they slowly restore their mortal selves, fighting the ongoing scourge of time. Eventually, however, they'll forget who they were, what their purpose was, and go hollow essentially losing their selves, their identity, and inevitably, their very souls. Humanity is such a coveted resource in this world as a healing item, multiplayer waypoint, and the visual restoration of your character's life force that it serves as a beacon to enemy players, jealously coveting it and seeking to harvest it from your lifeless body. This is the trade-off. Dark Souls is all about the ratio of risk versus reward. Going human has its perks, but also leaves you open to cross-dimensional raiders, drawn to your life force like flies to honey. This mechanic informs the story of several characters you'll encounter in the game. Some will aid you without hesitation. Many will go hollow in their pursuit of immortality. And others still will seek to trick and rob you of all your possessions, even your very humanity, in order to stave off their own oblivion. This is Dark Souls.